Is the filming on? Oh, good. <laughs> 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 oh, Kelsey and Ashley. Oh, here we are again. <laughs> well, you guys did good on the last one. I thought. Get your face. I don't think I talked much. <laughs> I can't remember if I re-listened or not. I did. You uh, did? Do you listen to all of them? Uh, really? I, I don't listen. I don't I've, listen to I've any missed talk. A, I've you, missed should, a few, uh, you should go and subscribe and uh, give the podcast a five-star rating. Actually, yes, if you're listening and you, are, <laughs> and you aren't already subscribed, uh, please subscribe on iTunes, whether you watch or listen. And if you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, you can watch them or listen to them however you choose. But please subscribe to both because it helps us out financially and we're spreading the word and all that. And that five-star review doesn't hurt either. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Hey, um, Keaton's hmm. collar. Yeah, microphone. Keaton's collar's right there. We were looking for it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. How does this move? It's all right. Keaton likes to live life on the edge. You are right over there? No. How do you move this? I'll you just don't. go like this. Ah, <laughs> uh, got it. <laughs> Maybe. Nailed it. I just moved my mouth to wherever the thing is. <laughs> okay. That's I what she that. said. <laughs> oh, that sounds like doing sex stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop touching it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we got to figure it out. This is usually the shit you do before you start the podcast, but we didn't okay. do that. All right, so okay. we're going to... Oh, I'm Chrissy. I'm, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Ashley. They've both been on before uh, when we did kind of like an intro to mm -hmm. Black Guy Nutrition Podcast. So what we wanted to talk about today, we just got an influx of what, like 50 new nutrition clients? A lot. Yeah. And so kind of what happens is, is when we get the onboarding emails, we have we onboard everybody through an email where we get like info about them. We kind of start to see uh, certain trends with a lot of people. So what we're going to talk about today is approaching, I mean, it seems like almost everybody has... I don't really do the New Year's resolution thing. Yeah, but that's it seems hard. yeah, it seems like most people do and it's mostly because of what happens in the month of December. Mm -hmm, yeah. Basically what happens <laughs> at the end of November up until today. Because <laughs> yeah. let's get real. Everybody eats like shit New Year's Day cuz they're hungover. Right. I mean, no, and like most shit's closed. So nobody goes to the gym on the I first. tried to eat healthy so hard yesterday and just didn't work. <laughs> I, did, so I, was a, I was a trash can yesterday. I threw up last night. Did Ben tell what? you? What? Oh. I was throwing up. Oh, no. All the smarts. Ben walked out of the bedroom. I was like, oh my God, he's going to go tell everybody I'm puking everywhere. No, I felt no. so, and what the best part is like, I felt the most hungover and I don't even drink. I just opened Food it hangover. Up, opened it on the sugar yeah. big time. Um, yeah. So I just actually, we have a Facebook group for our nutrition clients and I just actually made a post about goals in the group. And I think the main thing I see with people when they start with us with nutrition is people are way too fixated on numerical goals. Mm -hmm. They want to see a, a scale goal or a certain performance goal that's like bound to a number. For example, like I want to squat this much weight or I want to deadlift this much weight. And they're focusing so much on those numerical goals, they're not even doing the basics mm -hmm. of what we require with our program. Right. So um, I think the biggest thing for people is to create small non-numerical goals. For example, your goal should be that you're going to track your food every fucking day in January, yeah. no matter what. No matter what. Like I did it yesterday. <laughs> it was like a hundred under on protein, yeah. and like a thousand over on carbs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, I, I think building the habit of, yeah. even if you're tracking loosely, we don't, I mean, like, I don't even require, depending on the client, I mm -hmm. don't even necessarily require sh like super strict tracking from everybody mm -hmm. if they don't need it. Like at first right. I think it's necessary, but I mean, creating a, creating a, like, and you're like, make your goals habit related. Like yeah. your goal mm -hmm. should, you know, create habits and the month of January should be to create a habit whether it's to track every single day, to not skip your workouts. Like for, mm -hmm. so like take me for example, the tracking part's easy for me. I can track every day. Like that's not hard. I get busy and I'm, I'm yeah, notorious I'm for skipping my training. Yeah. Then you have Kelsey <laughs> who f will never fucking skip a workout. It's just ingrained <laughs> in her, but might not be the most accurate tracker at times. Yeah. Um, definitely. you know, so like be aware of what the problem is. If the problems you're training May, build a better build better training habits in January. If your problems in nutrition, mm -hmm. build better nutritional habits in January and start there. And even what you're saying about the track the tracking, even though you tracked it yesterday and it wasn't 
the best thing you saw? Oh, it was Some fun. people, <laughs> it was a shit storm. I looked at it and I was like, Jesus Christ, people pay me for my help. <laughs> but like some people think that they go crazy and then they track it and they're like, oh, oh too bad. right. Not that bad. And there's so, times where, yeah. It, yeah. And that, like yesterday I ate <laughs> that pop tart on the way to get burgers. Remember? I was like, I'm so oh my gosh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I missed that. Ben, ben had left a red velvet pop tart yeah. in oh, the no. in the car and we were on our way to the fucking restaurant and i was like god i'm so hungry i'm just gonna eat this pop tart on the way to getting the burgers greasy so burgers hungry. <laughs> yeah that's what one nice thing about doing the plant-based thing is uh those veggie burgs yeah mm-hmm. aren't nearly as rough as the alternative yeah. um see so yeah, i mean even like for me luckily my training has been i haven't skipped a workout actually since ben got home which has been nice yeah nice. so my training's been really on point but um, and I've been loosely tracking every single day, but I haven't even been remotely attempting to hit yeah, any specific right. number. So I think for me, my, I know that my training's back under control, but I think for me, the month of January is going to be to try to like hit my protein and my calories every day because that's what's been yeah. suffering. Good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I think, you know, in January, start, start the year off with just creating better habits that'll last you through the year. Because if you start your year off like, I'm going to squat 300 pounds this year, and you're so fixated on squatting that 300 pounds that you're losing sight of everything else, you're, it's not going to take you anywhere. Right. I, uh, we <clears throat> were doing check-ins this morning, and I was actually really impressed with a lot of our clients already. A lot of them weren't really setting goals, but they were setting habits already. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had about four say my my goal for the new year is to prep my food and, and track it a couple of days in advance. Right. And mm-hmm. multiple people said that. And I thought that's, that's a really good goal for a new year. Right. So I was really impressed with a lot of the check-ins this morning, actually. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, another thing too, that, I mean, I've said this on the last podcast, I don't, I'm, I'll never be, we'll never, Black Iron Nutrition will never be that company that's like all about insane transformations and posting transformation pixels. Yeah. Like that's why I rarely post them because for me, it's not about, the physical transformation that can take place, especially not in a short amount of time, like some of the other big companies go for. And like, that's what some people want. Some people want a really dramatic three month transformation and there's a way to do it. And I just don't necessarily agree with it. Um, you know, the, the low calorie, low carb, uh, Mm. overtraining method. Yeah. And yeah, it's not sustainable either. Exactly. And that's, that's, you're going to get that three month transformation in three months and then it's going to go away and it's going to take longer to do it every time. And so, um, one thing I've really been priding ourselves on recently is our clients understanding that it is a marathon yeah. and it's not, you know, I mean, I don't remember the last time I had a client in check-ins ask if we could get more intense to get yeah, quicker aesthetic results. results. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that people kind of know by now that we're the people that you come to if you have, if there's other issues at hand and, you know, like yeah. we really pride ourselves on creating better habits. Yeah. I call it the mental PRs each week. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people will have them and yeah, yeah, sure. On their check-in sheet, they'll say like, Oh, I, you know, I PR my push press or whatever it may be, which is cool. But a lot of the time there's food and mental PRs too. Yeah, absolutely. More often than not. I just think that we really push our clients to, uh, focus on those mental PRs and folk like we, I want, I want to just create better relationships Mm -hmm. with people and their food. Um, And then, you know, we have people who come to us who have a good relationship with food. There's no, um, you know, signs of ED or anything. And they've they've never, you know, they're not, they don't overdo the sugar and they understand what food is and uh, they have a good relationship with it, but they're not adequately fueling themselves Mm -hmm. for what they want to do. And so like even educating our clients on better how to handle their nutrition too. It goes, it goes so far beyond you know, oh, send us progress pictures yeah. every single week. Yeah. All we care about is what you look like. Right. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something. And that <laughs> totally slipped my this mind. is why we make notes. I usually make a list. <laughs> yeah. and it just seems like this week with podcasts, we've just been like diving into it. I know we uh, haven't had one, but it'll come back to me. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing I kind of want to talk about with nutrition to uh i wanted to bring up macro hoarding because mm. kelsey kind of uh <laughs> got this delight too and like i mean i think that there's two types of macro hoarders the people that do it intentionally and the people that do it unintentionally yeah. and so uh i'm not trying to throw you under the bus <laughs> kelsey i'm just Sorry. using you as an example kelsey's a crossfit games athlete kelsey trains for hours every single morning she does you know there multiple piece training sessions where it's going to be strength 
conditioning almost daily, mm -hmm. um, skill sessions, gymnastics, everything. Like how many hours a day do you train? It two varied. to four. Two to four. Two to four. One yeah. or two rest days a week. Sunday's a true rest day. Mm -hmm. Thursday's just like skill. Skill work. And even sometimes on Sundays you go to the track when the weather's nice. Yeah. Um, Kelsey eats <laughs> very well. She makes her overnight oats every night and she wakes up in the morning and has her overnight oats. And then what I've noticed recently <laughs> is I don't see Kelsey eat at work during the day. I maybe see a shake happen. Uh, but then again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not over, I'm, I'm not bringing yeah, any business right. nights every single day yeah. either. And then Kelsey gets home and she eats a very nutritious dinner. She usually has a piece of fish and like the biggest plate of fucking vegetables <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. True. And then at night she does Greek yogurt with a bunch of stuff mixed into it. <laughs> <laughs> and so she asked me the other day, do I need to train, do I need to change my eating how the, you know, my nutritional for the open? And I said to her like, I'm like, so let's go over what you eat. And <laughs> you're like, well, and I asked what you eat during that. You're like, well, I just kind of have snacks. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like would would you say you eat more than 50% of your food at night? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So Kelsey being a CrossFit there Games. Was, yeah. yeah. Kelsey being a CrossFit Games team athlete and with, you know, with the ambition to go individually this year, um, to put it bluntly, that's not the way. Mm -hmm. Pre other games athletes eat. They eat well, but I mean, like, I'll take Brooke Ends, for example. You know, she's a personal friend, and in the time I've spent with her, that girl eats chicken and sweet potatoes probably like four or five times a day. Yeah. You know, pre-workout, post-workout. Yeah. In fact, I don't, I don't even ever really recall seeing her drink protein shakes, and that's one thing I've noticed. Yeah, It's easy, though, you yeah. know? And, like, mm -hmm. having a scoop of protein in your in your oats in the morning and then having a protein shake and then having a scoop of protein in your yogurt yeah. at night. Like, um, especially too, if like you ever find yourself getting hungry or anything like that. Um, you know, one thing I'm, I've really been, and Kelsey's been doing great this week. She like prepped her chicken. She's been doing, you know, like chicken, <laughs> broccoli, sweet potatoes, stuff like that. <laughs> Eat more food. Yeah. That's another awesome yeah. habit. You know, like I told myself today, no more protein bars. I'm done with the protein bar thing. I, I mean, yeah. It's a quick fix for when I'm hungry and it's easy because it involves no prep. But at the same time, when you look at volume wise, what 20 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbs and six grams of fat looks like in a bar compared to a meal, yeah. the meal is going to fill you up more. And it's just a better, it's probably going to be more cost effective too over right. time. You mm -hmm. know, like <clears throat> me spending $3 a day on a protein bar is fucking bar. stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even doing the math on that, like over the course of a month, you know. So, you know, K Kelsey making those small dietary changes, like Kelsey's not, Kelsey's lean. Kelsey's in, in her body is incredible. And I don't think your training's been, I think your training's been going well, yeah. but I'm just really interested to see as what's going to happen yeah, with too. a better balanced Balance. eating schedule. Yeah, and yeah. I'm the same way. I don't eat breakfast because I eat so much at night. Yeah. <laughs> I wake up and I'm not hungry. So last night I intentionally... After we had, well, I fucking threw up all my dinner. I don't know. <laughs> this is fucking sick. But like, I purposely didn't eat late yeah. last night, and I woke up this morning and I made breakfast and I ate breakfast. Yeah. And I'm trying to get back in the habit, like, and like, I I don't personally subscribe to the whole like, oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, yeah. shit like that. Mm -hmm. I think the most important meal of your day is going to be what you have pre or post workout, depending on right. what type I of training agree, you're yeah. doing. You know, so like, if you train at night, breakfast is not going to be your most important meal of the day. Period. Right. But I know that I've been trying, you know, I've been training earlier, stuff like that. So I, my, another goal for me, you know, I told myself no more protein bars and start eating breakfast every single day. Yep. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned with what the scale says right mm -hmm. now or what my body fat percentage is. Like, I know I could be leaner. <laughs> uh, since Ben's been home, I've definitely been very, very lenient with my diet. Um, <laughs> But stuff like that, like those yeah, are important yeah. goals and important habits to have. And if your if your diet is mostly made up of, you know, beef jerky, protein <laughs> bars, protein shakes, and snacks, and then you you know hoard most of your macros for dinner at night, don't work. Don't make your goal right now to be a certain percentage body fat or to mm -hmm. gain or lose weight. Like make your goal to be improve your nutritional changes. And once you get that under control. Mm -hmm switch your focus to a yeah. more numerical goal. <clears throat> I think a lot of people like myself find that if we're just like sitting at home at night and watching TV, we're like, oh, I need some, I need something. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. Full <laughs> <snacks and time. laughs> yeah. So I've just found like needing to switch it instead of doing the yogurt, I'll 
have the that protein during the day and I'll save some carbs and fat and have a little popcorn or something, whatever yeah, it might yeah. be. Switch it up. Just yeah. something that you can like snack on a little bit. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just so you don't go overboard and well, plan that out. Even like another that. thing too that I've had to tell my clients in the past is like, you know how I feel about TV. Right. <laughs> I just don't. It doesn't. It takes a lot <laughs> for me to not get bored. Like, I can't sit down and watch TV. Like, right. I pace or I go start a project or something. <laughs> so some of the clients who have said they have an issue with, like, boredom meeting at mm, night, yeah. I've asked them, are you watching TV at night? Yeah. It's so easily to oh, yeah. sit down with a bag of popcorn. Yeah, or eat the whole thing. Fucking trail mix or anything. Right. And eat yeah. mindlessly while you're watching TV. And then next thing you know, you look down and you're like, fuck me. Yeah. I just ate a whole bag of popcorn. So I've told them, like, if your hands are occupied with what you're doing, mm-hmm. you're not going to be inclined to eat. So, yeah. for example, remember when we used to color? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck. I was so into it for a while. <laughs> or, like, for me, reading or, or like, yeah. doing a hobby or a project or something at night that I can't mindlessly eat while I'm doing it. Yeah. You know, diverting your attention, whether you draw or whether you paint or whether you read or anything like that. Yeah. Something where you're engaged with what you're doing so the mindless eating can't take place. Mm-hmm. And I also think, like you said, with the hoarding the macros, then when you get that snack at night, it's so hard to stop eating it because Absolutely. you've basically you not eaten all day yeah. right. and then you kind of just lose control. And I got in that bad habit too. You know, I'd eat chicken and vegetables and kind of skip the carbs, save them for night. But I was like, no, like you said, yeah. with training, I need to be eating all those carbs after right. I train. Yeah. I don't need to be saving them for night. There's no point in eating them before I go to bed right. and I lose control. So I've tried to get a lot better about eating mm-hmm. potatoes and rice right after I train and yeah. stuff to kind of yeah, definitely. Yeah, combat that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing too that I'm very guilty of is when I'm tracking my food, I'll scan that barcode and just hit one serving, even though I know damn <laughs> You know right, you had more. I yeah. had four, <laughs> right. especially with like the Trader Joe's popcorn and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's really easy. I mean, and this gets a little neurotic, but the way I used to do things, um, when I was a strict tracker is I would like, all, like trail mix or almonds or something. I'd portion, portion them out. out. Yeah. Oh ahead yeah. Of time. Definitely. Take, I have I would, to, <laughs> I would take the bag and just portion it all out and it, mm-hmm. it makes it so you're less likely to right. eat it right out of the bag, which kind of sets you up for mm-hmm. multiple servings no matter yeah. what. Like, I don't know anybody that can just yeah. sit down and have. And you're kind of like meal prepping in a sense. That yeah, way exactly. you're just meal prepping that portion. Yeah. And I, well, you're, you know, portion it all out. If yeah. you, yeah. if you have the problem of overeating or, you know, mindless eating or stuff mm-hmm. like that, it's just kind of like that just small amount of effort that goes into that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, another, would you have anything else to add as far as goals are concerned or what you've been seeing with check-ins? Um, or like unhealthy behaviors you want to mention? No, mm. that nighttime one pops up a lot. Yeah. People the, who can't control it at night type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think this is probably a common one for most people, but, you know, they don't like their veggies and those are, so you know, they're so filling, you know, it's a way to kind of, you get all your micros and it fills you up mm-hmm. much more than, you know, your snacks do. And so... You know, trying to get more vegetables in your diet is just going to help. There's so yeah. many veggies <laughs> in the world. Like, you know I, there's, and play around with like, like cooking. I think That's cooking is so say. important. The, yeah. the people we get that are like, oh, I just don't like vegetables. It seems like they're like steaming them. Yeah, what are you just like <laughs> boiling them or like? Yeah, it's that's, you know, yeah. and you know, like. Even roast, like there's so many types of like flavored oils mm, now, yeah. or, like and spices. Just add spices. Yeah, you know? like have you had truffle oil? <laughs> you know, and like <laughs> truffle oil, or like ba- like if you you know bacon grease or stuff like that. Like yeah. cooking and roasting your vegetables mm. with chopped up bacon or anything. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many ways. You just need to do a little bit of research. And if yeah. you don't like vegetables, find ones you can tolerate and cover them in stuff that makes them taste good. Yeah. yeah. Like it's not it's not hard to do, but like roasting them or pan cooking, you know, there's so many ways to do it. Mm-hmm. But there's it seems like people who have no knowledge on cooking mm-hmm. are the people who seem to not like vegetables. Yeah, right. And I get it if they taste, you know, if they're bland, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But if you just add a little bit of flavor and Mrs. Yeah. Dash, yeah, That's my favorite. Yeah, that yeah. twenty one, oh, that yeah. twenty one salute or whatever from Trader Joe's is real. I good mean, too. I just roasted that broccoli on New Year's with olive oil and salt and pepper, and I yeah. couldn't stop eating it. I yeah, was like, it's good. okay. Yeah, just I mean, just little tiny yeah. tricks like that. So I mean, there's ways to make food taste good. Definitely, there is. So just play around with recipes. I think that helps mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, foodgawker.com. Mm. It's oh, so good. Yeah, foodgawker yeah. is awesome. Yeah, find all different types of ways. Yeah, I don't know. It just comes down to doing 
a small amount of ba- like you need to put the effort in. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, the other thing too is it seems like a lot of our clients who have had meal plans in the past, it seems like I mean when someone for the for the coaches that actually write up meal plans, um, I've seen what they look like. And it's just very basic. It'll just say have five ounces of chicken with a cup full of green veggies. Like they're not giving you recipes on how to cook Mm -hmm. all your shit up. So I think so many people who have been bound to a meal plan for so long have gotten in the habit of just eating very boringly and plainly. And the same thing over and over and over. Same thing over and over and not, you know, branching out with just basic prep or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, just educating yourself on how to prep thing take a fucking cooking class yeah yeah that's tight take it with your significant other like <laughs> yeah. on a date You're or fine. something yeah you know, press the shit out of someone <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah. so yeah i mean but basically the point of this obviously it's the beginning of the the year and a lot of people are trying to get their nutrition dialed in or figured out and i think yeah. um getting too hung up on numbers is going to immediately set you up for failure for the rest of the year like yeah it might work for a month or two but focus on creating small healthy mm-hmm. habits with your nutrition um, identify the problem, yeah. create habits from there. And once you, once you create a new habit, a healthy habit, go on to the next one mm-hmm. and keep going from there until you aren't skipping meals, aren't skipping training, you know, you're making better nutritional choices. And then from there, tackle what you want to see on the scale or what you want to do in yeah. the gym. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Anything to add? I don't think mm-hmm. so. Short and sweet. <laughs> All no. right. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay, bye. Bye. (laughs) That's not bad. People like to listen to the short stuff. Yeah. Short stuff. Yeah.